Like most of you, after reading through the very thorough 49-page indictment, I was left wondering, what was the former president thinking? Why does he believe the classified documents produced by intelligence officials belong to him? Why wouldn't he listen to his lawyers, like Christopher Keyes, who advised him to be more cooperative with the Department of Justice, or his lawyer Evan Corcoran, who told him to just give the documents back? Why doesn't Trump realize that he has the right to remain silent? I don't know the faintest idea, but you know who might be able to help us out? Someone who spent more than a decade by Trump's side, intimately ensconced in nearly every aspect of his personal and professional life. Joining me now is Michael Cohen, former Trump personal attorney, principal of Crisis X, and the host of the Political Beatdown and Mea Culpa podcast. His new book is called Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics, an apt title. Michael, can you answer that question for us, for those who don't understand why Donald Trump wouldn't just give the documents back, listen to his lawyers, or do anything smart? Because Donald Trump doesn't listen to his counsel, ever. What he'll do is he'll find as many people as he possibly can until he, he'll ask as many people as he possibly can until such time as he finds the one person that agrees with his knee-jerk reaction. The problem is that person is only doing it in order to stay in his good graces, something I would say that Boris Epstein is doing at the current moment. He is not doing Donald any service. And in fact, you're seeing lawyers leaving, leaving Donald's employ at an alarming rate, almost to the point if it doesn't stop, he may have to have a public defender <laughs> representing him in the case where he was indicted for today in Florida. You know, so might Walt Nauta, who doesn't have a, a, a barred attorney in Florida, couldn't even be arraigned today. Let me read just a little bit from this indictment, which I think is one of the telling scenes. Trump family member uh, talking to Walt, Waltine Nauta. Trump family member, good afternoon, Walt. Happy Memorial Day. I saw you put boxes, and then this person says, I saw you put boxes to POTUS room. Just FYI, I will tell him as well. Not sure how many he wants to take on Friday on the plane. We will not have room for them. Plane will be full with luggage. It sounds like Melania to me. Thank you. Walt Nada. Good afternoon, ma'am. Smiley face emoji. Thank you so much. I think he wanted to pick from them. I don't imagine him wanting to take the boxes. He told me to put them in the room and that he was going to talk about them. He literally is obsessed with the boxes. Why was he so obsessed with the boxes that he wanted to take them on vacation? You know, Joy, we had this conversation several months ago. When I turned, I told you that the information that he had made him feel powerful, made him feel like he was the president again. But more importantly, he was holding on to them for what I would say would be nefarious purpose. I explained that it was, in his mind, a potential get out of jail free card. But it also gave him relevance on a world stage. For example, whether they were going to have conversation with Mohammed bin Salman, the um, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, or the Kim Jong-uns of North Korea, or even the Vladimir Putins of Russia. It didn't matter. This was going to be the way that he would show his importance. This is a way that he knew that he would be able to make a significant amount of money. And it would also remain as a get-out-of-jail-free card for if, in fact, like what's happening now, there's an indictment or a potential prosecution and an incarceration, he can always turn around and use that information to basically extort the country that if you try to incarcerate me, I will release this information, which is top secret, that will place the entire United States's, the entire United States' national security at risk. You really want to play that game? That's how Donald Trump thinks. Explain while Nada to me, um, the scene of him resuming his role uh, as valet as soon as this uh, arraignment in which he has no power, Donald Trump is a former president, he has no lawyer, Donald Trump has two lawyers represented him, and then he walks out of the courtroom right behind Trump returning to being his valet. As somebody who, you know, was in the making attorneys get attorneys camp with Trump, can you explain why he doesn't just flip on Trump and save himself? Yeah, because for some reason, he believes that he's different. He believes that Donald will take care of him. He believes that in the end, he will be OK. He will be in a greater position of power if, in fact, Donald Trump rises to the occasion and becomes once again president of the United States. He is fooling himself. You know, the other night on 
um, on MSNBC on Chris with Hayes Chris Hayes. I turned yeah. around and I said, Walt, run. I'm, I look right into the camera and I'm going to do it again. Walt, what are you doing? Run. Get out of there. It doesn't work well for anyone except for Donald Trump. If it was his own, if it was Donald's own children, if it was Don, Ivanka, Eric, I would turn around and say the same thing. Run as fast as you can. He's not spending a single dollar of the money that he grifted off of the Trump trash. He's not going to spend a single dollar to retain a lawyer on your behalf. And he will leave you in the in the dust simply, right, because he doesn't want to pay the legal fee if he gets word or he believes that you are going to provide any type of information that is negative to him. He yeah. will not pay the fees. He will leave you hanging. It makes no difference to him. He doesn't care about anyone or anything other than himself and his own freedom. What do you make of the fact that Melania, who apparently was getting her hair done today instead of being with her husband as he's being indicted for the second time, nor Ivanka and Jared were there. Page six reporting that Ivanka and Jared felt they lost some of their social circle yeah. associating with Trump, and now they just want nothing to do with him. None of them were in court. Yeah, well, that's what I would call true love. <laughs> I mean, you know, what, nothing could be finer, right, than, you know, hanging out in a diner while your wife is getting her hair done and you're in the middle of an indictment. Uh, or, you know, your daughter or son-in-law who have pulled down over two and a half billion dollars as a direct result of your presidency calling themselves senior advisors they should call themselves senior grifters they realize that they have made so much money that they're not willing to jeopardize a penny of it even yeah. if that means distancing themselves from the father the shy and retiring Michael Cohen, <laughs> subtle as <laughs> always uh, with his comments. Uh, Michael Cohen, let's see if Waltine Nada listens to you. He probably should. Thank you very much. Walt, call me.